Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Karen Johnson, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. I'd like to call our meeting uh, this evening, June 23rd, 2020, to order, and I'd like to read the following. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to an order issued by the Governor of Massachusetts dated March 12, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting are being recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. Uh, is anybody interested in recording all or any part of the proceeding this evening? If you could hit the raised hand function. Seeing none, uh, before I move to uh, the approval in the minutes, I know we've got a, a bunch of new folks on the line. I just wanna take you through the agenda this evening and how uh, the, the process will proceed. Uh, we have a couple of applications for outside uh, table service. Uh, we will ask the applicant um, to explain uh, in brief uh, what, uh, what uh, they're looking for in terms of out outside table service. I'll ask for comments from the restaurant opening working group. Uh, the board will ask questions and then we will open up uh, we will open up those matters to questions from the public. There's also a discussion of the potential purchase of 335 Lincoln Street. Uh, we are taking up the town administrator's evaluation, a COVID update, uh, public comment for items not on the agenda, appointments and reports, and we have a couple of votes this evening on uh, uh, paving and roadway contracts. As in all cases, the board will discuss those issues first, and then I will happily recognize you if you have a question or comment, uh, and if you could use the raised hand function, that would be helpful. I would now like to move to the approval of the minutes. We have multiple sets. I'm not sure if my colleagues are ready to vote on all of these or some of these. I know that there have been some changes made. Hey, Karen, this is Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi. Um, so in the, the vote list, list May 26, June 2nd, June 4th, and June 9th minutes. In the packet, I did not see the June 2nd minutes. I had circulated comments on the June 2nd minutes back on June 9th, and I don't know if there have been subsequent changes since my comments to the June 2nd minutes. Uh, <clears throat> why don't we hold, unless, uh, unless Heidi has a response to that, why don't we hold on the uh, June 2nd minutes and take up the 26th, the 4th, and the 9th? Um, so I'm, Karen, I am, I'm, I'm sorry. Able, I might be able to help on this. Um, I had um, I had not seen Joe's edits on the June second minutes uh, when they previously came before the board. I subsequently saw them and let Heidi know that I was fine with June second. So uh, certainly, if you're not fine to vote June second, we can wait. But I am. I am also. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm happy to vote all. Uh, all of these minutes. I, I am prepared to vote for all minutes except the June 9th. I've not had time to review that one. Okay. okay. Let's hold on the 9th. So uh, would you like a motion? Yes, that'd be great. Uh, I would make a motion to, the appro to approve the minutes dated May 26th, June 2nd, and June 4th, 2020. Second. All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. Okay, great. Uh, next, we are moving to the first application for outside uh, table service. Um, Al Manove, uh, I, I thought I saw somebody on the line. If the applicant could um, share with us a brief statement of, of the plan. Uh, Susan Murphy is sharing her screen that shows a visual of the plan I get as, uh, as proposed by the restaurant working group. Yes, good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is Alan McKenna on behalf of Al Manove and Wahlburgers and I'm joined tonight with uh, by Paul Wahlberg, and we're happy to walk through these applications for both Almanove and Wahlburgers. Um, thank you. Uh, Susan put up on the screen the Almanove expansion. As you may be aware, um, Almanove has an existing patio, and our proposal um, is to expand upon that existing patio as shown on the drawing. The orange line shows the barrier that we have uh, put in place that would separate the area from the public. Um, the area is shown there. You can see there is a total of 36 seats that we would be adding to this area in a combination of either two top, four top, or some, some couch seating that has tables associated with it. Um, 
all of the space is contiguous to our existing space with clear view from inside the existing restaurant space and would be overseen obviously by the management personnel um, on staff. So in a nutshell, that is the, the plan at Amanove. The barrier is, um, has been put in place and it, it contains uh, some stakes along with some planters as well as a double rope um, with lighting that um, would exist around the exterior as shown in the, the dark uh, orange border of the new area. We've also shown the um, ingress and egress and flow for both our patrons to get in to use the facilities inside the restaurant as well as the flow for, from the servers that would be in the back where it's shown there by the yellow arrow coming out of the back of the existing restaurant at Almanove. Great, thank you. Seems like a thoughtful proposal. Uh, is there somebody from the restaurant working group that could speak to this? Karen, it's Lieutenant Denapi from the fire department. Good evening. How are you? Good. So basically, I actually had met down on uh, in the shipyard with Paul and Alan and also Scott from the shipyard. Um, we kind of walked through some different ideas, some different plans. Um, they have full permission and authorization from the shipyard to use the grassy area next to their existing um, patio. It's a good plan. Um, it actually works out really well. I was actually down there today. They already have the uh, ABCC barriers set up. Um, it, it looks really good. I, I, it, it's a solid plan. I mean, they put some real thought into this. I mean, we made a couple of adjustments with them just to kind of meet all the COVID regs and everything. But um, I have to be honest, I think the whole, I can speak on behalf of the whole board that this was actually, um, we were very pleased with what they came back with and how we were able to work this out. Excellent. And I saw that uh, the working group uh, uh, package indicated that we needed to hear from the uh, condo association. And we got that uh, letter later this afternoon. And it sounds like, you know, Samuels will just make sure that if there are uh, trash or noise issues related to the outdoor uh, table seating or the expanded outdoor table seating, that they would uh, bring those communications to, to you um, at Almanove and also Wahlburgers, it sounds like. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, we've, we, we've heard entertainment license requests in the past, and we're just mindful that we're trying to manage, as you know, a mixed use, uh, a mixed use area and just trying to be respectful of everybody's interest. But, you know, as Lieutenant DiNapoli said, it seems like a, a thoughtful plan to me. Uh, Joe, questions or comments uh, with respect to the Almanove application? I think it looks good. I, I did have a question uh, in other applications that we've seen the pathway to the restrooms is typically one way um, and then people return uh, to the table a different way. Here, am I correct that they're going in and out the same path? Yes, uh, Mr. Fisher, that is correct. At the, the way that the restaurant is designed at Almanove, what we've tried to do is separate the traffic flow as much as possible by having our servers use the rear um, egress and then having the public go in and out of that front entrance there. Uh, and then that again, the pathway to the restrooms, it looks like it goes right through where people will be sitting on couches. Correct. There's, there's, as you can see in the drawing, they're separated by the six foot uh, buffer zone, if you will. But yes, there is a path that would go through the middle of that space, but we've spaced the tables in the seating to maximize that pathway and ensure that there's six feet separation there. So I, I don't, maybe I don't see it, the, sep, the I, do, I don't see six feet of separation from the pathway to the, uh, to the couch. So I'm, I'm looking at the couch um, and then there's a table. Um, I'm just not understanding what the separation is between the pathway and the couches and the table. Yeah, and I appreciate that. It is hard on these drawings as we've worked to try to put the six foot areas as, as cleanly as we could as possible. Um, we understand the buffer area and the pathway area. We have separated the tables. This drawing, we are a little bit limited in terms of the scalability in order to reflect all sure. those things, but we've spaced it so that we can have the separation required between the tables and the pathway um, as shown on the drawing. I know it's hard to see the different yeah. six foot, but you know, I'm working with, with uh, Lieutenant DiNapoli and, and uh, Ms. Sarney from the, from the Board of Health. We worked through those details to make sure we have the adequate separation. Will that pathway be marked on the ground? 
Um, not currently, but if something is required, we can we can definitely um, make something happen there. It's. I, I'm not looking to cause can cause problems, but is there a reason I, that that I, pathway? And I I totally understand that, but it is we. It's when you walk through and you're kind of in your field of vision, it's pretty clear. Okay. When you walk through it. So, is everyone in the working group comfortable not having that pathway marked? Do, um, no, excuse me, if I. Oh, Susan, sorry. This, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is Susan Murphy. Um, I would note, and it, it's something that the working group discussed, and just so that the selectmen know as well, the food inspector for the town, even though inspections are not required under the COVID standards prior to the outdoor seating opening, the food inspector for the town has been going around and she is actually checking on these separations. In fact, I understand that she has a six foot length of PVC pipe that she has in her car <laughs> that she uses when necessary. So there was some discussion as to whether that that one couch in the corner closest to the sidewalk maybe could get pulled back a little bit closer to the where the orange boundary is if necessary. Because we had the same conversation about how it's a little bit hard to scale yeah. it out. Um, there is the the little eating coffee table there, et cetera. Um, but the working group felt that it was something that could get adjusted in the field. Um, yeah. And so didn't think it was necessary to ask them to readjust the plan. So I, I got it with the with that adjustment, no need for adjustment. What what about marking the pathway to the restroom? Are you comfortable? Some restaurants are mark. Some some restaurants are physically marking with tape yeah. or otherwise on the ground. Yeah. Um, it, it depends on the the kind of the facts of that restaurant. Yep. Yeah. Um, it sounds like the applicant is is willing to do something if. If that's what, if you feel that would be um, I'm, I'm, helpful. I'm really asking what the working group feels, whether they think it's necessary or not. The, the working group <laughs> was comfortable with it the way it's presented. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have then. Hey, it's Lieutenant DiNapoli. I can actually speak on that. I think what, what it is is also is the advantage that they have here at Almanover is that they have the hostess station right there. So they'll be able to kind of help monitor and control traffic as it's coming through. So we don't end up with a backup or a bottleneck or, you know, on where anybody needs to go. So I think that was an advantage that they had at the hostess station being right at that point. Okay. And, and, and the hostess would, would take on that role. Absolutely. Okay. I think the hostess is going to have that PVC pipe to bash people on the head. And <laughs> deviate from the right path. That sounds great. Uh, Joe, we further questions? From the police no. department. <laughs> yes. Hi, this is Chief Thank Olson you. speaking. Uh, I know that we had a lot of conversations about this during the working group, and I think one of the biggest problems we had with the working group is obviously um, we, you know, we're, we're asking for plans to come up really quickly. Um, we can't always get them to the detail that like a building plan would be, and we also realize that um, it's very difficult to draw. We, we know the walking route is not going to be that direct route. It's going to sort of swing through that area a little bit. So I don't think if we ask them to knock it out, they would have any problem with that. But I think that sometimes you actually have to go put the stuff in and put it down before you can actually mark the spaces and the route that people are naturally going to flow. So we felt that that was something that, that would be sufficient room there for them to maintain that walkway going back and forth. Yep. And like I said, it's, it's, we, we can't get into the detail of, you know, having an engineer or, or a person designing these things um, and, and the expense of that, I would imagine, too. We're, we're trying to provide them the quickest route to getting a quick, safe route to get their business open. And I think we've been very diligent reviewing all these things. So I'm very comfortable with this. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing else. Okay. And, and I'm assuming um, that diners will be instructed that when they're up and about and moving through the restaurant, they need to have their mask on, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mary, questions or comments with respect to the application from Alma Nove? Uh, no, actually, Tom and I spent some time this afternoon walking through this application. Uh, he answered all my questions and I'm all set. 
Great. Questions or comments from the public with respect to the application of the Almanove? Um, I did have one question, Susan. I note that, uh, and I, I noted at the top of the discussion, um, the, the concern about noise. I note that there is no um, amplified sound uh, permitted in the outside dining area. Uh, I know that Almanove has an existing entertainment license. Um, does this, does this, and I should know this, but does this further limit that license or was there no amplified sound, but just the ability to have music under the entertainment license? Um, as a, we got a report, the working group received a report from Susan Sarney, who unfortunately couldn't be on the call, on the meeting tonight, but based on her, she has daily calls with the Department of Public Health, and they have said that um, there should be no um, entertainment of any type allowed during the phase two, because they're trying not to mix uses. They don't want patrons kind of settling in for the night. They really want the outside dining to be come, dine, and leave. And so the Department of Public Health has instructed the local health inspectors, you know, that comes in phase four when we're going to have, you know, more bar use and entertainment allowed and that type of thing. So in light of that, the working group has um, added this no outdoor entertainment um in, the, in this case. Okay, that, that makes sense. Thanks for that clarification. Uh, I'm sorry, questions or comments from the public with respect to this application? Seeing Hi. none, I would, ex oh, Cameron. sorry. Hi, yeah. Karen, it's uh, Mike Clancy. Hey, Mike. I, I just wanted to say that I agree with uh, the Lieutenant and the Chief about what was explained along with Susan on this pathway and what they're planning on doing. Great, thank you. I, I, you know, I, I think it seems like a very thorough analysis that, that all of you are doing for each one of these, and we do, we do appreciate it. And that, you know, we appreciate you taking us through, you know, the work that you've put into it, so that we can feel comfortable, you know, granting these approvals. Sure. Um, so, uh, uh, who's ever going to make the motion? Um, I did ask Susan, we if we could read again the general conditions only once and then in the subsequent vote refer to the general conditions as recited. And I got that permission, right, Susan? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so uh, would one Joe, of my you colleagues- want me to, You want me to read the first one, Joe? You did the heavy lifting last week. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, uh, I will make a motion that the board approve the application of Shipyard Ventures LLC DBA Almanove to expand outdoor table service, OTS, in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35 and the Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service, the OTS policy, subject to the following conditions. A, site-specific conditions. No amplified sound nor other entertainment shall be permitted in the outdoor dining areas. B, general conditions. One, outdoor table service shall be permitted in compliance with the approved plan. Two, the location, size, and layout of the OTS premises is defined in the OTS policy. Approved herein may not be modified without further approval. Any request for modification must be submitted in writing with detail as to the proposed modifications to restaurant opening at hingham-ma.gov. Three, addition of amenities such as tents or outdoor heating units are subject to further review and approval. Request for such amenities shall be sent in writing to restaurant opening at hingham-ma.gov. Four, approval holder shall be responsible for regular cleaning of trash and food in the OTS premises and shall not allow trash, food, or other nutrients to accumulate or to be deposited intentionally or unintentionally into storm drains. Five, approval holder shall fully comply with all applicable state and local laws, regulations, and standards, including without limitation, A, Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service, B, Massachusetts COVID-19 mandatory workplace safety standards. C, Massachusetts COVID-19 safety standards and checklists, restaurants. D, 
ABCC advisory regarding guidelines for extension of premises to patio and outdoor areas. Six, this approval may be subject to additional public safety conditions to ensure the safety of the diners, pedestrians, and vehicles if determined by the town that an unsafe condition exists once outside table service is in operation. Seven, the establishment may be subject to periodic inspection for compliance with this approval. Failure to comply with this approval may result in suspension or re revocation of this approval and in fines in accordance with Massachusetts law. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. Great. Uh, okay. One down uh, and one to go. Well, we Would need like a second, second vote. vote there, Karen? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make a motion that the board approve the request of Shipyard Ventures LLC DBA Almanove pursuant to COVID-19 order number 35 to temporarily alter the license premises under liquor license number 00031-RS-0528 for the period commencing as of the effective date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020 for operation in compliance with the aforesaid motion just adopted. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. Okay. Now that one down. Yes. Uh, and on to Wahlburgers. So back to you, Alan, I believe. Yes. Thank you. Um, so similar and I assume, um, Susan, thank you for sharing the plan. So on your screen, hopefully you can see the plan that we have submitted for Wahlburgers. This one is very similar. I apologize that the, the bottom left portion of the plan, you'll see some a pink arrow and a green arrow. That is the side of Wahlburgers where in an earlier iteration of the plan, we were going to propose some seating on the left side of Wahlburgers. But after working with Lieutenant DiNapoli and, and Ms. Sarney, uh, we've decided to, to not have seating on the shipyard drive side. So we're only focusing now on the um, the other side of Wahlburgers where for those familiar with the shipyard, there's a walkway there that separates us with the Trident location. So there's a large walkway there. And so our proposal here is to expand from our existing patio out um, into um, a part of that walkway um, to add some tables there, as you can see on the plan. Um, the area is uh, contiguous with our restaurant, just like at Almanove. There are clear sight lines from inside the existing premises that are um, managed by our staff. And we've added the ABCC um, barrier in the form of a stanchion with chain that surrounds this area at Wahlburgers. You can see there in the orange, there's a darker orange towards the front entrance at Wahlburgers, but that extends down the length of that area shown to the right of our existing restaurant. Um, we have a series of two top and four top tables. Um, you know, we did, did a lot of work with uh, Lieutenant DiNapoli and Ms. Sarney on revising this plan. This is probably version six, I believe, uh, where we had some tables that were gonna be closer to the walkway that we've, we've pushed back. So the tables that you see there are right up against existing glass barrier of our patio. So we have a very minimal footprint going into that walkway. And there's um, a lot of space between our expanded patio and the expanded patio that Trident has put out there. There is, as shown here, um, the walkway um, and path that would be used both by our service staff to, to access the patio space through a door that exists on our current patio, as well as uh, the walkway for guests to get inside the facility and use the restrooms. We've separated here, as we, as we were able to do at Wahlburgers, um, separated you know, our pickup and takeout area through a entirely different um, form of entrance on the other side of the restaurant to reduce any path of traffic overlap here at Wahlburger. So in a nutshell, that's our plan for Wahlburgers. Happy to answer any questions. Great. Is there a representative of the uh, working group uh, that could comment on the application? Hey, it's Lieutenant Napoli again. So basically, again, you know, I met down on the shipyard with Paul, you know, Alan, and Scott from the shipyard. We reviewed a few different ideas um, on what would work. 
Yeah. Um, came up with a type full of ideas and, and different ways that we could do it. This seemed to make the most sense. Originally, they had wanted to put tables on Shipyard Drive, but it just we weren't going to get the separation that we needed, so they happily took those out. Um, again, it's a, a very well-designed area for what they want to do. Um, they can go a little bit into that walkway. They have the uh, glass barrier along with a brick wall that actually divides the tables that are on the patio to the tables that are going to go into the walkway area. So they have a COVID barrier that's appropriate. Um, clearly defined paths. I mean, where that arrow is for their service, that's right where their restrooms are on the back of the restaurant. So it's it's pretty minimal. Um, takeout is able to be relocated to the complete other side of the building. So it's just, it, it's a good plan. I mean, I, I think Alan said it, this was probably the sixth, um, the sixth one that they came in with, but again, they were just working with us to make sure that we could do this effectively, safely, and and meet the needs, their needs to be able to open as well as the needs of protecting the public and the patrons with everything going on with COVID. So um, we were all in favor of it. We all liked it. Um, again, a lot of thought that went into this and a lot of effort that went into this and, you know, came back with a really good working plan, we feel. Great. Great. Further comments, Chief Olson. Yes, I just wanted to uh, add it, uh, Lieutenant DiNapoli and um, Sergeant Kilroy have been working a lot together on these things and um, everyone from our group seems to be very happy with it. And as we said, it, it has been a work in progress and you can see, you know, some of the stuff that didn't fit, we had to move on and, and readjust to the other side. So these are a work in progress and it's great to have that relationship working with these businesses. It, it's, it's really been a great process. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Joe, questions or comments with respect to the Wahlbergers application? I've reviewed it, I'm very comfortable with it. I really appreciate the separation of the uh, pickup and takeout area from the uh, outdoor seating. I, I'm very comfortable with this plan. Thank you, no questions. Great, thanks Joe. Mary, questions or comments? Uh, I also reviewed this with Tom this afternoon. I don't have any questions. Great, uh, questions or comments from the public with respect to the Wahlbergers application for outside table service. Karen, it's a Carol from the Hingham Anchor. Um, hi, Carol. I, I don't, hi, I'm just on audio, so I just wondered how many additional um, seats between the two and four top tables that there will be, additional seating. I'm looking for that. Susan, do you know that off the top of your head? This is Alan. Um, it's actually 28. Yeah, 28 seats among the four tops and two tops that we're adding at Wahlburgers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further questions or further questions or comments from the public with respect to the Wahlburgers application? Seeing none, I would take a motion. I will move uh, that the board approve the application of Paragon Funding Group. Roman Three LLC DBA Wahlburgers to expand outside table service OTS in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35 and the town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service, the OTS policy, subject to the following conditions. A, site specific conditions. No amplified sound nor other entertainment shall be permitted in the outside dining areas. B, general conditions as previously identified in our prior motion. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. Second, no, second vote, I'm ready for uh, that one now. I further move that the board approve the request of Paragon Funding Group Roman 3 LLC DBA Wahlburgers pursuant to COVID-19 order number 35 to temporarily alter the license premises under liquor license number 00059-RS-0528 for the period commencing as of the effective date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020 for operations in compliance with the aforesaid motion. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Uh, Karen, aye. Um, so Susan, um, Wahlburgers yeah. is aware that, that Eileen has to file this before it's effective? No, so thank you. I was just going to make that one last comment. So the process now is that Sharon Perfetti um, from the Fleckman's office will file the approval by email with the town clerk. The town clerk is 
kind of been doing this now. We've been doing this for a week. She's a, she knows what that they need to be turned around quickly. So Sharon will email it to the town clerk. The town clerk will email mm-hmm. back a confirmation of filing. And as soon as that confirmation is received, which should be first thing tomorrow morning, then it will be forwarded to, um, I believe, Alan. He's our contact person. And then as soon as they have that in hand, then they are good to go. So it just needs to be confirmed by the town clerk that she has received it, and they'll be good to go. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. I think we are – that concludes the uh, applications for outside table service this evening. Um, thank you for attending. Um, Alan and Paul, we appreciate it. We, we uh, appreciate the fact that you're uh, bringing the restaurants back online. I know the public's anxious to uh, – to get back down to the shipyard and to dine with you. So thank you very much for your thoughtful proposals. Well, thank you very um, much. Thank you. Great, great. take care. Uh, the next uh, item on the agenda is the discussion of the potential purchase of 335 Lincoln Street, uh, which is the parcel on Route 3A that we have identified as um, a potential site for a public safety building. Um, Susan, I don't know whether you or Tom Mayo would like to introduce us to this topic. Tom, sure. Tom, what do you prefer? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, um, so Susan will walk you through the, the proposal. Um, just so everyone knows, uh, this is the property at the old um, Russo's Marine and the property uh, for which we've just received um, uh, uh, town, meeting uh, approval. T- town meeting approval. Thank you. I almost said permission. <laughs> uh, town meeting <laughs> approval for the, um, for the uh, uh, site, the site work and some preliminary design. Um, to see what will, whether or not the property will uh, will fit our needs. So, Susan. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The uh, Board of Selectmen had previously discussed this property, um, I want to say it was just the week before state of emergencies went into effect. It was somewhere around the second week of March. Um, the Board of Selectmen reviewed and voted to approve um, or ratify an offer to purchase this property. Um, Since then, there was a a little bit of a hiatus while the town was dealing with the state of emergency, Um, but since then there had been active negotiations of a purchase and sale agreement with the seller. The purchase and sale agreement, which has been provided to the Board of Selectmen and has a draft date of today, is consistent with all of the material business terms of the letter of intent that the Board of Selectmen reviewed back in early March. Um, As Tom stated, it's the property at 335 Lincoln Street. It's a little over three acres. Um, The purchase price is $5,475,000. The town will have a due diligence period, which will extend until Uh, November 30th of 2020. The town is not required under the purchase and sale agreement to put any deposit down. So the town has no money at risk while it investigates the site. During the due diligence period, the town has the right to do um, any and all investigations it needs of the site. The typical due diligence is title to the property, a survey, environmental investigations, And in addition, um, my understanding is that the town intends to work with the um, building committee that was also approved at town meeting in order to come up with not the full construction drawings, but the feasibility of constructing on the site. So that would include if there was any you know, layout types of issues. Can does, Would it have the requisite area for the building, for the parking, um, those types of, of, of due diligence for finding out whether a public safety building that would meet, meet the needs of the town as identified by the Board of Selectmen and the public safety departments, um, if that could be done. And then the last uh, contingency would be for the, uh, town to bring this to a special town meeting prior to that November 30th deadline and seek the approval from the town meeting for the payment of the full purchase price. 
Um, so that's the basic uh, outline of the agreement. And if there's any more specificity or um, other types of information about the agreement, I'm happy to get into more detail. Great, thank you, Susan. Uh, J Joe, questions or comments uh, with respect to the uh, the PNS? I've reviewed the PNS with uh, with Susan, with Tom, um, and I had a number of questions that they answered. Uh, but Susan, I'm wondering if you can just review for us. Um, the seller, the seller diligence materials, which are required in the PNS, uh, to what extent we have them, uh, and to what extent we are expecting them to be received shortly. Yes. So, the seller is required to provide all property materials that they already have. They're they're a starting point for the town. They they deliver those to the town, um, and the town may review them. The town can't rely on them because the town didn't have the contract with the, for example, the engineer, whoever prepared them. But it provides some background information. So the town um, will receive the existing environmental reports, existing title policy, um, design plans for a building that the seller had planned to build and then elected not to and decided to sell the property instead. Um, all Any types of those materials that the seller has in their possession. Some of them um, Tom already has received from the broker on the project, and some of them the seller is required to deliver the town within a week after signing the purchase and sale agreement. Okay. Um, and if you could just review with us uh, the conditions to closing. So the conditions to closing include that the property, that the town has done all of its due diligence and the town has found it that based on its review that a project is feasible there. If the town does not find that, the town can terminate and, and walk away from the deal. Um, it's also a condition of closing that town meeting votes to uh, approve the project. Um, there is the, the current owner of the property obviously purchased it from the prior seller. The prior seller did have a um, right of first refusal to buy back the property if the seller chose to sell it as they are doing now. Um, we do understand that there was a, a prior buyer for this property that fell through, I wanna say in the last year. In connection with that sale, the prior owner had waived their right of first refusal the sellers anticipate that that will be the case. However, um, the town is subject to that process. And that process involves that the seller, within a week after signing the PNS, will have to present the terms, the town's terms, to that prior owner. And then that prior owner has 14 days to either say, yes, I'm going to buy it under all those same terms, or I am going to waive it. So the town should know within under a month, a few weeks after signing the purchase and sale agreement, whether or not it will be moving forward or whether or not the prior owner will choose to um, take back the property for the same price. Thank you. Um, I've got no further questions on the PNS. I do have one other question on the transaction, and it's the question that was raised at town meeting. Um, are we comfortable with the purchase price? which was negotiated prior to COVID. I've had discussions with Tom and I am comfortable, but I don't know, Tom, if you wanted to comment or Susan, you wanted to comment on the purchase price since that was a topic at town meeting. I, I can, Tom, do you wanna respond? Or? Uh, you can, Susan, go ahead. If I okay. jump, if, I, if you want me to jump in, I will. Okay, thank you. Um, so there was a question with respect to whether or not the the purchase price is still the value of the property. Um, the town had, and there was a reference to an appraisal that had been done. The town's appraisal did come in lower than the purchase price, but based on um, our understanding, and when I say our, I'd say myself and Tom kind of talking with other town officials, um, the 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 market in Hingham has not softened with respect to purchase prices. There have been other buyers um, 
kind of courting for this property. And in fact, there was a lot of pressure on the town because there was a competing offer at the time um, that the town was talking to this buyer. Um, so based on that information, um, there was no indication, at least in the discussions that Tom and I had, and we also discussed it with John Coughlin, that there, that it, there would be an ability to renegotiate this price. Um, I know that there is also a uniqueness to this property, and I think Tom could probably speak to, and um, Karen spoke to it a little bit at town meeting, but I, I think Tom could also speak to why this property is unique for the town. Sure, it, it, it is a unique property. We've done, uh, as Karen knows, because she spearheaded the effort, um, the, uh, we've done an exhaustive search in the region with the, with the development of Avalon and Alliance and, um, and some other uh, uh, Brio in the shipyard, we have uh, an a, a vast expansion of, um, of need for public safety in that 3A corridor. And uh, the fact that we have a, a property available to us on 3A that has access at a set of lights that the fire department, fire trucks can, um, the operators can, uh, can you know, turn, can shut that light off and access uh, Route 3A without hindrance um, to allow for a speedier uh, um, response times. Um, all of these things uh, together uh, kind of make the case that this is the, that this is the right property, that this is the, 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 the draw for the, the need with, with, with this increased population was the result of a, of a net length um, GIS analysis uh, started um, a year and a half ago. Um, so we, we've done, we have a lot of data, we've done a lot of analysis, and it is in fact the right place. I agree, and I think when I look at the price, there's also a different factor to consider, which is the opportunity cost to the town. Um, yes. And uh, in light of the unique opportunity that this presents uh, and really the cost to the town of trying to replicate this opportunity uh, and the implications if we don't go forward, uh, I'm comfortable with the price. So thank you for your comments. I've got nothing further. Great. Uh, Mary, questions or comments with respect to the PNS? Um, I've had a couple of conversations with Tom and Susan about this over the past week. Um, my questions were all answered. I think the only thing I would add to the discussion at this point is that um, if we do move forward on this site, um, town meeting did authorize the creation of a building committee. And um, given the timeline that Tom and Susan have described, uh, it will be important for that building committee to begin its work soon. Um, I would encourage uh, any volunteer who is interested in this or any other volunteer position in the town to complete a talent bank application. Uh, the moderator described that at town meeting on Saturday, but uh, very shortly we will begin the process of speaking with our fellow citizens about volunteer opportunities in the town. And certainly this uh, public safety facility is uh, one important volunteer opportunity and one that has a little bit of a sense of urgency about it. Great, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I do too. And I, you know, I echo the comments um, of, of Joe and Tom and Susan. You know, I think that we, we've spent years trying to identify a parcel. We spent, you know, some years trying to evaluate the current location of the North Street Fire Station to see if we could renovate that facility. As you, as you know from my prior comments, uh, the footprint of that parcel was just not large enough to accommodate mo modern firefighting equipment. Um, and the GIS mapping, I think, led us to uh, the conclusion that it was really the Derby, the, the 3A corridor there uh, that, that really was the location for uh, this kind of a facility. And, you know, the, the ability to con potentially construct a public safety facility that would provide you know, synergies with police and fire, I think continues to build a culture here in Hingham of uh, the cooperation you heard the chief and Lieutenant Dinopoli hey. talk about uh, earlier this evening. Uh, it's in keeping with our efforts What's to that? move our, our public safety facilities outside of neighborhoods. Um, and, uh, you know, to Joe's point, I think that 
we have spent a great deal of time really up and down 3A and, and in those side streets looking for opportunities to locate either a fire station or a public safety facility. And, you know, to start from scratch would put us back, you know, I would assume at least five years. And, uh, you know, I think given the, given the needs of our police and fire for a modern facility that accommodates men and women, um, and modern equipment and modern, uh, you know, exercise areas, uh, meeting rooms. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, I think this is an exciting opportunity and a very unique parcel. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy that we're able to take a vote on this tonight. Yeah, Questions I, I are, would, oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm just going to add that um, I know that the police chief and the fire chief are both very excited about this parcel and have encouraged us to move forward. Correct. I, I see <clears throat> Chief Olson on the line. I don't know whether you'd like to make a comment. No. Um, Sorry, uh, Chief Olson, okay. I just had to unmute myself. So. <clears throat> yes, I think this is something, um, you know, we've talked about before and we have definitely outgrown this building uh, since moving here in the late 90s. And um, a lot of the money, um, you know, it would be necessary to bring us up to some of the modern standards of reconstructing our evidence room to meet certain uh, guidelines and conditions now, and some of the other equipment. Um, we're not going to have to spend a lot of that money that would be required here by having a new building. And I think that, as I said before, uh, we in my career, I started out on Lincoln Street. Um, so we were able to serve the entire town then. I know a lot of people have thought that maybe it's too remote or on one side of the town, but um, more so than 40 years ago, we now have cruises that are capable of doing stuff that was unheard of back then. So our cruises remain our offices for a lot of times and uh, the location of the station um, really doesn't necessarily matter. It's not like a fire station where it has to be placed logistically around the area that they're protecting. And I think this would really set us up for the future and the needs that we need to meet the future needs of a, of a modern day police department. So I'm very pleased with it and happy with the location. Thank you, Chief. Questions or comments uh, from the public with respect to the uh, purchase and sale agreement in connection with 335 Lincoln Street? Karen, this uh, is Tom. Do you, do you mind if I just make a quick comment? Sure. I just wanted to highlight it, and it's it's a little bit of a tertiary benefit, but um, I just didn't want to lose sight of the uh, of the impact that this decision ultimately may be able to have on the potential for a new senior center or an upgraded, expanded senior center, and of course um, our parking problem at Town Hall. So that there are there are other benefits beyond just the that of the uh, of the police and fire uh, directly benefiting from the site itself. Great, yeah. Thank you for. Thank you for bringing that up. Joe. Karen? Yeah, if I can yeah. just add and, and build on what the police chief was saying before. Um, I mean, two things that stood out to me uh, was there is inadequate training space in the existing police center and to the extent um, that additional training is, is needed and will benefit the town, this, this new location will provide for that. And second, the existing location was not built to accommodate both male and female officers. Um, that's something we need. And that's something that the, um, the department has been making sure of that we have uh, represent officers who are uh, both male and female. And uh, I think out of respect for the officers, we need to move forward and have a, a station that will facilitate uh, the uh, the proper uh, housing of those uh, officers. So um, again, I, I really think this is an important move and I'm glad we're moving forward. Great, thank you. Uh, questions or comments from the public with respect to the PNS? Uh, seeing none, I would take a motion. <clears throat> I'll move that the uh, Board of Selectmen enter into a purchase and sale agreement with 291 Mystic LLC for the purchase of the property located at 335 Lincoln Street in the form of the draft dated June 23, 2020, subject to the terms and conditions set forth therein. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. 
Great. Uh, well, I, you know, this is a long time in coming. I think this is an exciting opportunity for the town and uh, the police department and the fire department. So w well done, everybody. Okay. Uh, next up is town administrator evaluations. So our, uh, our town administrator's employment with uh, the town of Hingham is governed by Article 5B of the General Bylaws, uh, which is actually a special act passed by the legislature uh, that codifies um, the role of the town administrator as well as um, in, the, in Section 1, the evaluation of the town administrator, um, in part in connection with his performance, including his or her ability to supervise municipal employees, property, administer town government effectively, effectuate policy, and accomplish established goals. Uh, similar uh, similar uh, parameters are included in the town administrator's contract with the town of Hingham, and we take that up now uh, uh, before the end of the fiscal year to provide um, Tom Mayo, our town administrator, uh, with his evaluation and feedback on his performance over the last year. Uh, Lisa Campbell, I saw, is on the line. I don't know whether you want to make any comments or we can move to, to Joe to, uh, to start us off. No, I'm good. Thank you. Great. Thanks for being on the line, Lisa. Uh, Joe, would you care to offer some remarks and evaluation of Tom's uh, performance this past year? So I know that we have um, each submitted our recommendations and our comments with respect to the town administrator, as well as have other town personnel. Um, just as an overall comment, uh, Tom has really um, excelled in bringing the town through a very uh, unexpected COVID situation um, and one that had the potential to dramatically um, displace town employees and dramatically upset the delivery of town services. And I think thanks to Tom and his assistants, and clearly I'm including Michelle, but I mean, I'm pointing to Tom as a leader neither of those events happened. The, the disruption um, did not happen. There was minimal uh, impact. Uh, I know businesses have been impacted, but in terms of the delivery of town services, Tom really saw us through. Um, so uh, I, I really salute Tom for his efforts there. Uh, this is nothing anyone trained for, anyone could prepare for, uh, but he did it. So, so thank you, Tom. Uh, the one area that um, for me is an important area that needs improvement um, is just to make sure that there is uh, ongoing communication uh, and that both uh, from the uh, selectman side as well as from really anyone else who is interacting with Tom and the selectman's office that there's ongoing communication that people don't feel that somehow they're not being listened to uh, and that we make sure that we are consistently responding to the needs of the community. Um, that's all I got for right now. Uh, great. Uh, Mary. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, I think um, uh, one of the things that has always stood out for me with Tom is his work ethic, um, his integrity, and his loyalty to the town. Um, Tom always puts the town of Hingham first, and in the last year, he's done that in many different and many unexpected ways. Um, I want to comment on a couple of experiences I've had with Tom this year. Um, one of the very important roles that I see him doing is building a strong town team. And uh, similar to previous years, in the past year, uh, Tom has, uh, you know, made some hiring decisions and um, has really just maintained such a high caliber um, of, of town hall staff. Um, I'm also really just very pleased with the partnership and the relationship that he has established with our new school superintendent, Dr. Paul Austin. I think we all know that the relationship between a town administrator and a school superintendent is really critical to the effective uh, uh, running of the government. and. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with, um, with, with what Tom has done in that area. Um, you know, in the last year, I've worked very closely with Tom 
um, the whole question of the water company. And, um, you know, I, I, people may not know this, but in the months preceding the, the town meeting vote, um, myself, uh, I, I met with Tom every Friday morning. Uh, we would sometimes meet three, four, five hours to, uh, you know, it was everything from strategizing on, on town meeting, identifying work, um, and trying to organize the meeting. And, you know, uh, I think we all know and we all saw that when the question of water company ownership came up in other communities, um, there were some dirty tricks that went on in that town meeting. And I think that, um, that Tom's ability to both organize a town meeting where 2,000 of our fellow citizens were able to participate in a discussion and vote and uh, that, that that meeting went off flawlessly, um, that, that was not accidental, that was due to Tom's role. Uh, in the last year, I, I think we all know and I think the community's seen in the last week that um, the transition activities that we've been undertaking have required a, a really significant um, investment in time. And it, in the role of the town administrator, there were a lot of these things where it was really important for Tom to play a prominent role. Um, he was the voice of the town in the negotiations of the asset purchase agreement. Uh, as chief procurement officer, he was uh, really took the lead on the Suez contract. He took the lead on the DEP business plan. Um, and over the past few weeks, he is leading the town's effort as we prepare to um, go to market and finance the purchase. Um, you know, I, I, I said this last week, but these activities are, are super time consuming and Tom is not only doing, you know, his kind of regular town administrator job, but he has this extra layer on top that um, has just really been so helpful for the town. Um, another area that I think we should note is that in, in his role as town administrator, Tom is also the CFO for the town. Um, I think the quality and the forward thinking nature of our FY21 financial management plan really speaks to, I think, uh, Tom establishing himself as the CFO for the town. Um, in particular, when we were looking at developing that plan, uh, Tom was pushing all of us, uh, myself included, to make sure that our decisions were triggered by data and metrics. And um, there were times when we were putting that plan together that, you know, Karen and Joe, you may remember, we kind of struggled with what was the right metric? How do we do that? Um, Tom really pushed us all. And I think that the quality of our plan is much better because, um, because he pushed us on it. Um, I would echo Joe's comments about Tom's exceptional performance uh, with respect to the pandemic. Every week is bringing a new set of challenges and Tom's leadership, particularly in establishing the IMT and uh, in establishing the restaurant reopening group, uh, I think are, you know, just, just really, uh, just really exceptional. Um, you know, looking forward, I would echo uh, something that Joe said, which is that, um, you know, the selectman's office and, and Tom as the uh, town administrator, uh, communication is one of the most important parts of the job. It's, uh, it's, it's responding to people, it's responding to questions, it's keeping people updated. And um, as, as we begin to transition back to, you know, going into town hall and things, um, I do think that there's an opportunity to, you know, maybe establish some communication protocols that just make sure that um, people's requests are responded to on a timely basis um, and that people are kept informed. I would say that I think Tom has done a great job in uh, bringing wonderful, wonderful talent into the selectman's office. And I think that um, members of, of our selectman office team can help with that effort. 
Um, I think Hingham is really, really lucky to have a capable and a dedicated town administrator. Um, in the last year, I think Tom Mayo has stepped up for the town in, in so many different ways. And I would just also like to personally thank him uh, for his counsel and guidance because um, I think he's made me a better member of the Board of Selectmen and um, I'm very grateful for that as well. Thank, thank you, Mary. Uh, I, uh, you know, going third, so a, a lot of the thunder has been stolen, but um, I, I guess I'd start by saying when I think about when Tom walked in the door and all of the things that have occurred to date, uh, he has been managing at least um, one job, uh, at least two jobs, if not more, uh, for the last couple of years. Um, you know, he when he came in, um, he had an assistant town administrator, so the office wasn't fully staffed. Um, he had at that point um, a water acquisition transaction that was ongoing um, that really ramped up, as you're indicating, Mary, in the lead up to town meeting. Uh, you know, that alone was a full time job. Uh, this year, uh, the day after town meeting, as we all know, you know, the, the Board of Selectmen's office began work on um, taking, taking um, possession and title to those assets. That's been a full-time job in addition to, you know, running a $128 million, $26 million operation with personnel and capital and programmatic needs. Uh, so, you know, to say he's, he's been spread thin, um, but he rises to the occasion, I think is an, is an understatement. Um, and I, I do, I think there are a couple things and then I'll, I'll make some more specific comments. I think there are a couple things that make him unique. Um, you know, one I think is his, um, his demeanor, his open and friendly attitude, um, I think make, make him accessible. Um, and I think he's very committed to his team. I think you heard that from Chief Olson earlier. I think you, you're hearing that from us. He values the people who work for him and work for the town. Uh, and I think people respond to that, that respect. Um, and it, as a result, I think it's a, it's a collegial work environment where people are willing to pitch in. And so when you know, a disaster like COVID hits, um, Tom has the respect and support of his colleagues um, across the town to jump in and do what's needed um, in the best interest of the town. Uh, and and I, think, I think that's a direct correlation to his leadership style and his investment um, in those who, who work around him. So uh, I just wanted to read a few of my comments for leadership and decision making. I said, Tom's established and actively fostered a culture of teamwork and mutual respect for all municipal employees. He's quick to recognize the contributions of his staff. Tom works incredibly hard and diligently to ensure each member of the board of selectmen is, has the information we need to consider the issues before us in a manner that is consistent with the open meeting law. Now that may seem like a, a throwaway sentence, but the amount of time and energy that he has to invest along with Michelle to make sure that the three of us are independently advised um, because, because we can't you know, deliberate all together outside of pu publicly posted meeting um, can be incredible. So it, it, it really, that investment of his time um, and energy really goes to the ability of the board uh, to function. Tom's done an outstanding job organizing and leading, leading the COVID-19 team, the reopening team, and the town meeting planning team. Like, <laughs> think about just that, right? Like, just that effort in that intense span of time to complete those tasks as professionally and efficiently as he did uh, was incredible. And I think part of that goes to him making sure he has the appropriate people around the table and, uh, and making sure that the input of those people is um, uh, heard and valued. Um, Tom's enthusiastic and friendly demeanor go a long way in handling delicate situations and achieving buy-in on town priorities. Um, I think in terms of communication skills, I think uh, Mary highlighted it. You know, I think, uh, I think Tom's worked really hard to foster a, a productive working relationship with the school department and in particular Dr. Austin. And I think again, that bodes well for our ability to move forward as a town, particularly uh, during this next, uh, what will be a very challenging uh, fiscal year ahead. <clears throat> Tom's made an effort to be visible in the community, attending events and working with community and business leaders. Uh, and I said, uh, job knowledge, I talked about him, you know, working at least two, if not, if not three jobs. And uh, frankly, I can't wait to see what he can do 
when he can focus on being the town administrator, you know, with the with the usual bells and whistles uh, that that uh, uh, position requires. Um, you know, I think he did a great job running the forecast group and the budget process for FY20. Um, and then he did a, an amazing job, as Mary said, pivoting on that and working to put together the FY21 financial management plan. Um, again, our, our ability to get that done depended on, you know, our ability to pull it together, but also our ability to work with our colleagues on the advisory committee and on the school committee um, and within the school department. And that, that that's a product of Tom's relationship building uh, all year long. Um, I, I similarly though, um, you know, shared Joe and Mary's, uh, I think, um, concern may be the wrong word, but hope for the future that um, that we can put in a, a communication metric or a matters management plan um, that that maybe systematizes um, inputs or questions or concerns that come in from the public or that are raised by members of the board of selectmen or other committee members that um, that make sure that we're not losing things along the way. Um, you know, I think the sheer volume of uh, the big and little things that we deal with, um, you know, I think, it, you know, to me demand um, some sort of infrastructure to make sure that we're, we're keeping track. We know, we know when the issue arose, we know who's taking care of it, and we know what the response uh, will be at the end of the day. You know, I will say that, again, given the challenges for FY21, you know, Tom was thinking ahead, I think on this as well, just trying to uh, target staff appointments, um, you know, particularly a, a procurement officer that could then free up some bandwidth from Michelle and from Tom uh, to concentrate on some other things. And, you know, at this juncture, we're going to have to, you know, wait on that. But I, I think it also shows you that he, he understood uh, these issues as well and was planning for that uh, for FY21. Um, so again, I, I again concur with Joe and Mary that it's been an, just an awesome experience for me as a member of the Board of Selectmen. And we, you know, I think you've heard from us that we collectively appreciate your, your contributions to the town. So uh, before I open it up to the public, I will give you a chance uh, for rebuttal if you want, Tom. <clears throat> I was just going to ask, can I have a vacation next week? Yeah. Listen, it's, um, it's, it's hard, right. To sit in these public meetings as this process to hear all of that. You guys all know, I, first, I, I appreciate those kind words. Second, I know you all know that the team that we have around us is what allows this town to run um, as smoothly as it does. And third, I will reiterate, especially to you, Karen, and you, Mary, what I told you um, two and a half years ago when you gave me this opportunity. Um, I will always put this town first and make my decisions uh, based on what's best for this town. Um, and I will do so uh, unfailingly. And, um, and Karen, I know you're rolling off the board soon. Uh, I, I hope that I continue uh, to, to exceed uh, your expectations. I, I, that's my goal um, is to, is to live up to that promise I made that night um, a couple of years ago. So uh, thank you uh, very much. And this is awkward, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tom. Questions or comments uh, from the public with respect to the evaluation of the town administrator. Okay. Seeing none, um, we will move to the COVID-19 update. Okay, hold on one second. Hold on, I'm coming. After we After said all those nice things, let's go. all that, I wasn't prepared here. Right. Yeah, right? <laughs> COVID-19 cases. Um, as of today, the Department of Public Health is reporting 107,439 cases in Massachusetts of which 8,604 are in Plymouth County. As of last Wednesday, DPH was reporting 269 COVID-19 cases in Hingham. The number of hospitalized COVID-19 patients, the percentage of people testing positive for COVID-19, and the number of COVID-19 deaths across the state continue to decline at this time. 
um, regarding the phase two, step two reopening. Since the public health data trends are continuing in a positive direction, Governor Baker announced that Massachusetts would move to a phase two, step two of the, reo of the reopening plan effective yesterday, June 22nd. Under phase two, step two, the following enterprises are now eligible to reopen with restrictions. Indoor table service at restaurants, close contact personal services such as nail salons, massage therapy, skin care services, pers personal training services, tanning salons, and tattoo piercing body art services. Retail dressing rooms by appointment only and offices now up, uh, up from 25% to 50% capacity. So that's the COVID update for tonight. Great. Uh, Michelle, anything to add? Not tonight, thank you. Uh, great. Questions from my colleagues. Joe, any questions or comments with respect to the COVID update? No comments. Mary, questions or comments? All set. Questions or comments from the public with respect to the COVID-19 update? Great. Uh, well, thank you for that, Tom. Uh, next up is public comment for items not on the agenda this evening. Anybody out there have a comment or question they'd like to raise? Okay, seeing none, do we have any appointments this evening? Not today. Great. Selectman and Town Administrator reports. Tom. Sure. Um, just, uh, just a quick update. We are in the process of, um, of holding uh, of preparing for and holding our rating calls for the um, for the ultimate uh, uh, issuance of, um, of of for the bonds for the water company uh, here at the we're hoping at the end of July um, we've done two of those rating calls to date and we have one more scheduled for tomorrow uh, and then the last thing I would add is just a sincere thank you to um, to everyone that's that had a hand in, in the running of town meeting, um, my staff in particular, uh, everyone has uh, stood up when asked, and they um, they they performed um, above and beyond at every at every turn. So uh, thank you to to everyone who had a hand in that town meeting effort. Great, Michelle. Nothing to add tonight. Thank you, Joe. Um, I just want to build on what Tom just said. I wanted to actually thank the citizens of Hingham for showing up on a hot day. Uh, we had nearly 400 residents. I think the count was 392, uh, 392 who attended. Uh, I know that this board had lowered the quorum from 300 to 200. It turned out we did not need to do it because the citizens of Hingham showed up. Uh, issues were handled. They were discussed in a respectful manner and we all had a chance to vote. So uh, just remarkable demonstration of civic duty and pride by the residents of Hingham. And also thanks to the moderator for leading a great meeting under exceptional circumstances. And that's all I have, thank you. Great, well said, Joe. Mary. Um, yeah, I have a couple things. Um, first of all, uh, last Thursday, you may recall that I had to step off of um, uh, our meeting in order to represent the town and the board at a um, Plymouth County Advisory Board meeting. I wanted to report to the board and the town uh, that during that meeting uh, we adopted the Plymouth County budget for FY21. Uh, it's an about, an about an 11 million dollar budget and you know similar to what all the municipalities are facing, Plymouth County is also looking at the potential for declining revenues so actually their budget, I, I, I'm thinking it was about a, a nine or a 10% decrease um, from last year. And um, I, I think that that was, uh, while difficult, that was a responsible budget to put forward. Uh, we were also updated on the CARES Act. Uh, as, as you're all aware, uh, Plymouth County is administering uh, CARES Act reimbursement for all of its member communities, including Hingham. Uh, I've let Tom and Michelle know this, but one of the things that they were talking about is making sure that um, when municipalities are submitting for reimbursement, uh, that they're providing, you know, all necessary backup and all detail. Um, it just sounded to me like their process for reimbursement and record keeping was quite extensive. And I think that's going to be very beneficial for all of us down the road. Um, secondly, uh, 
just uh, one thing about town meeting, you know, as, as I was walking in, I picked up a copy of the Hingham Town Report. And, you know, that's a document that's available every year at, at town meeting. Um, you know, it's something that our office under Sharon Perfetti's leadership works hard to put together. Um, and, uh, you know, I actually over the weekend started taking a look at it. And all of the committees that are appointed by town meeting, and there are a lot of them, I'll give a report for the year. And it was just really inspiring to read the accomplishments and the things that all the different committees are thinking about. Um, we see these, you know, we see different groups coming into our board every week. But I tell you, thumbing through the pages of this document, it, it really does um, embody our, our very strong sense of volunteerism and how fortunate we are to have um, so many dedicated volunteers. Um, and I know that there are copies of the, of the town report that are available um, for people who are interested. Uh, two other things, just, you know, Tom mentioned that we had rating agency calls. I just want to give a shout out to our finance team, Gene Montgomery, Rick Nowland, Aaron Walsh, uh, Sue Nickerson, um, Michelle and Tom. Uh, late last week, you know, a couple days before we're getting ready for town meeting, the town received something like 65 or 70 questions from the rating agencies. Um, some of them were kind of quick to answer, but a lot of them weren't. And the professionalism of that team in turning all those responses around so that they could be delivered to the rating agencies yesterday uh, was just amazing. I remember several months ago, Gene Montgomery said to me something, something to the effect of, when you get ready to go out to market, we're here for you. And man, our finance team is there for us and for the town. They've shown up in such a big way in the last week. And, um, I, I'm just so grateful. And um, the last thing that I would just mention is that the um, Hingham Farmers Market continues to order on a pre-order basis. Um, if you go to HinghamFarmersMarket.org, there's a little button on the top of the web page that says 2020 Market Pre-order. A lot of the Hingham Farmers Market vendors require orders to be placed, some of them Wednesday night, some of them Thursday night. Um, and I would just encourage you to do it. Um, our family's been uh, purchasing from the farmer's market. It's an easy pickup. It's very well organized. Um, again, very high quality products and a way to support uh, local agriculture. Uh, so that's it for me tonight. Great, fantastic. And I guess I'd, I'd close with echoing Joe's uh, remarks about just how um, amazed and appreciative I was at the number of folks who showed up and participated in our town meeting. Uh, I too congratulate the moderator. Uh, it was a challenging venue and I thought he ran a very efficient and effective meeting. Uh, and I just, I, I just was uh, delighted by frankly, the questions, because it, to me, it meant people were paying attention and um, had read what we had provided to them and, you know, and wanted questions answered. And I think that, that um, you know, that's one of the hallmarks of our town meeting is to be able to have those conversations, as Joe said, with, uh, I think, civility and, and professionalism. And I, I think that was on display uh, on Saturday for sure. So I hope everybody stays well. Um, and uh, and let and please know that you know the board of selectmen does appreciate uh, your efforts to be in attendance uh, as as our legislature in Hingham at town meeting. Uh, with that, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. Great. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night, all. Thank you.